Hi friends, this is Laura with Papori of Life. I hope that you are doing great. Today what I want to talk to you about are eggs. These are awesome. Now the reason I'm talking about it today is because so much is going on about our immunity. We talk about viruses. We talk about the seasons of viral infections and stuff. And eggs are a part of what can help protect us from viruses. It doesn't mean we won't get them. No matter what we do, all we have to do is eat healthy, try to do the best we can, and hopefully if we get a virus, we don't get as sick as some people can get. And it starts with a healthy diet. Sorry, I'm just going to throw it out there. Now, I've taught you how to make fire cider, and this is fabulous. It does have a burning type sense. If you've ever had whiskey, because we have used whiskey before, just half a shot, and then we fill water in it, and that helps if we've been exposed to people who have, are sick. We come home and we just have a little bit. It helps. I don't like it, but you know, you just follow it with a big glass of water and it goes away. Same thing with the fire cider for us. Other people are fine with it. It's just a small quarter cup that you would consume. The other things I've talked to you about are elderberry syrup. Elderberry syrup is a great preventative. No guarantees. And I'll tell you, I'm not telling you this stuff to say, well, I got sick using elderberry syrup. No, 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 no. These are preventative items that you can do and you can make and have on hand. Do you have to have all of them? That's personal choice. You decide. I like elderberry syrup and I take it daily between October through March, sometimes into April, depending on how the flu season is going for the year. The other thing I take every day, and if I'm not feeling good, I take it more, and that's garlic-infused honey. Use your local honey if you can, and that's my preference. I am not going to tell you that you shouldn't buy store-bought, but there are some things to be careful of when you're buying store-bought honey. But I'm staying on with eggs, and why am I comparing these immune items with eggs? It's because eggs are an immune preventative type food, natural food. It's not in a pill. It's not in any processed food. It is made by nature via a chicken. And it's awesome. And why do I know this? Well, first of all, I saw something come across my way and I'm like, no way. What it is, is a lot of our immunizations have egg in it. And I did know that part. That's why I can't take the flu vaccine because I'm allergic to eggs. Yes, I know. I have eggs and I do consume eggs and I'm going to get into that. But because of how they use it, anybody who has an egg allergy or an egg sensitivity, they won't do well. But I also get very sick with the flu vaccine. Now, years ago, when my kids were little, we didn't get the flu vaccine. My husband was young, our kids were young, but our daughter, one of our daughters got very, very sick and we didn't realize what was happening. She was very sick and so she ended up in the hospital, almost died of pneumonia. I, when my doctor came in after we were there a little over a week, he came in, I told him, I said, I thought she was gonna die. He said, I did too. He stayed overnight in the hospital. I don't know a doctor today that would stay overnight because he was so concerned, but there might be. And I cannot tell you how much respect I have for, for this gentleman because he showed us how caring physicians were back then. <laughs> I really don't think they do that because they now have residents that, or they have hospital docs now, so your regular doctor doesn't go to the hospital much anymore. So what happened was she was so sick once we figured out her allergies, and she's allergic to a lot of stuff in nature and stuff like that. So what we did was the doctor said, okay, we brought her to the allergist and she says, you're going to need to consider having her get the flu vaccine. Back when my kids were younger, we didn't have a whole list of vaccines that pre is presented to parents today. And, you know, we just did the typical basic ones and I think those are perfect. So we added the flu vaccine to her regimen for a few years until she was old enough to decide she didn't want to do it anymore. And what happened after she was sick, with less than a month I think it was, 
my husband got sick and I'm watching his symptoms. I said, honey, you've got pneumonia. And he goes, no, 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 I'll be better, I'll be better. I said, no, we're going to the doctors. So we went to the doctors and the doctor asked me, he goes, what do you want me to do about this? I said, get him in the hospital, he has pneumonia, let's get him taken care of. He smiled and he said, I'm glad you said that because I didn't know if you'd be prepared. I said, prepared? His bag is in the car. We are going to the hospital. I just need you to get us in the door. So we got there, they took care of him and he definitely had pneumonia and he started getting the flu vaccine. Not the rest of the family, just two people who needed it for immune support. And our youngest, our daughter at that time, she was so sick, her immune system was gone. So we needed to start building it up. And we started having to take care of her allergies and stuff. So what I'm saying is the immunizations, at least at that time, they use egg in it because the reason is, is the antibodies in our human bodies, in most mammals, it's IgG. In chickens, it's IgY. Because of that Y, they are able to use that so that they can introduce the medicine into the body. And that is why for most people, the flu vaccine works for them. Now, this other vaccine that's come around, that's a different type of vaccine. But, but for the flu, this is what they put in there so it's easily absorbed. Do I agree with the flu vaccine if you're healthy? No, but that's, that's me. You have to decide. Some people are, are like they want to. And that's where it comes into it's a personal choice. Now, let's talk a little bit about good things about eggs. And we all know that, you know, when kids are infants, we don't introduce food to them until they're ready for solid food. And when we introduce food, we do it little by little. And eggs is an easy food to introduce to an infant because it's soft, they can pick it up, whatever, whether it's hard boiled, scrambled, or whatnot. But you still do a new introduction, give it three days for each new food item. And if you get that into their diet as one of the first foods, the nice thing about it, it builds their bones, it builds, um, let me see, it helps with a healthy body, strong nails, hair, and bone. So there's many benefits to eating eggs on a regular basis. And they are packed with tons of protein. We need protein for energy. We need it for strength. All of that. Now, Eggs are super good for your immunity. Now, it would, what's really what's surprising, this is what I came across. People who were sick with the coronavirus, they're in the hospital. Do you know what they were doing? What they were feeding them, encouraging them to eat? Two eggs a day for breakfast. Why? Because of that Y antibody that's in chicken eggs was actually something to help them fight the coronavirus. Why haven't they told us this? I won't answer that. But what I'm saying is, if this was working, and this comes from timesofindia.com. This is, this is some information I grabbed from that site. This is replica on a number of other sites I came across, and I'm like, whoa. So I decided I'm going to copy and paste what I wanted to be able to share with you. So if we eat eggs every day, or let's just say two to three times a week, have it in some form of breakfast food, lunch food, hard-boiled egg. I can have a hard-boiled egg. I have allergies to eggs, believe it or not. I do better on farm fresh eggs. And that was part of the reason I got the chickens, most especially when they said the prices were going up. That meant all the farmers were going to go up too, and they did. So we went and did this, but David likes eggs. I do fine with hard boiled eggs, but I don't do good with fried eggs. And what happened when I made David a fried egg with hash browns from potatoes? I wanted to make him that, and it's been years since I've done it because of my milk allergy, so I wouldn't fry him up. He would do it on his own on the weekend or something. So I said, "Hun, how about if I make you a nice hot breakfast? He was all excited, so I made it. I still have sensitivity, allergies, whatever you want to call it, to fried eggs, 
and I also can't handle scrambled eggs. It depends on how they're cooked. I have to really cook them. Now, why do I have to really cook them? Why does a hard-boiled egg work for me? And why can I have eggs in baked goods? That comes from having a conversation with my allergist. She's re since retired when I found out about my egg allergy. But she said, if you cook these in a certain way, and it includes some herbs that I'm allergic to, except cilantro. I can never have cilantro. That was awful. But what happened was, hard-boiled eggs are fine. Scrambled eggs have to be cooked up a bit. But what happens even with scrambled eggs, I start getting a rash on my arms and on my face, and then my body starts burning. So I ended up taking activated charcoal. So I said, okay, I can't have scrambled eggs. But then I forgot <laughs> about, I'll make a fried egg. I haven't had one in so long. My, I was like, oh, I just want one. And so I made one. And it was the worst reaction I've had where I looked like I was out in the sun and I got sunburn. I was burning up, not with fever. I was just, my body was inflamed from head to toe. My extremities were red and I was itching. And I'm like, okay, I went and got my activated charcoal. I needed more than two. I needed four to stop the nonsense of what happened. That's okay because I can have a hard-boiled egg. So I can have a hard-boiled egg in my salad. Most people do not respond to eggs this way. But if you have an allergy to it, if you have a hard time breathing, which is something I had, um, my asthma started acting up, the burning, the pain, and the fatigue. And so I just said, okay, I can't do this. So we just put it aside and I won't make fried eggs for me, but I can make fried eggs for my husband. I don't mind doing that. So I do want to still have hard boiled eggs. Let's talk about why are they so good for you? Um, so I shared that they were feeding people with coronavirus eggs to help them heal. And like I said, I don't understand why they didn't tell us all this because we could have saved all this hassle. And so what am I recommending to you? Try to get eggs into your diet because I think it's important. If you don't have an allergy, whether it's a hard boiled, however you want to process your eggs, do so. And if you end up with too many because you're raising your own, there's ways to process. If you get eggs on sale, you can actually freeze eggs. You got to crack them open, scramble them, put them in a, like a, ice ice tray then pop them out and um, put them in a baggie you can do that you might have to spray it I haven't figured out how to get them out I've never frozen them I've just heard that that's an option you can dehydrate them I've done that and that works fine so there are ways for you to consume your eggs if you get too many and you don't want them to go bad you can do that so so they're good for your immunity let's go what makes it so healthy what is the eggs that make it so healthy there's a broad misconception that eating eggs on a daily basis is not good for your cholesterol. Consuming eggs regularly is an antidote for immune system. They gotta decide, is it good for our immune system or is bad for the cholesterol? Let me share with you some foods that are high in cholesterol but are still good for you. Let's see, we got shrimp, that's good, chicken breast, sardines, eggs, turkey breast, mackerel, I've never had blue crab, but I'll take it. Sa salmon, whole milk, full fat yogurt. We don't do any low fat stuff here at all. And I have sensitivity to milk as well, but we're finding that there are, I'm trying like, um, I did try some farm fresh milk raw and that was fine, but I didn't drink a lot of it. So I can have the butter processed by whole milk. And so I, I've learned how to adapt my diet so that it works for me. Now, those cholesterol things, okay? These things are, we need, our, our liver processes our cholesterol stuff, and, but our body needs all these nutrients from these foods. If you think about it, all those foods are excellent for us. And like the fish, we need fish oil in our diets. And so when people say, oh, that has high cholesterol, I can't have it because of my cholesterol levels. I think doctors need to start educating us 
on what is good cholesterol foods and what is bad cholesterol food. What you want to really be careful of are sausages, anything that's processed. You want to be really careful with those types of foods because those can actually make your cholesterol levels go off. Now, what are some other nutri super nutrients from the eggs? They are packed with amino acids and antioxidants. And every time you hear antioxidants, you got to think of cancer because those are the things that help prevent cancer. I'm not saying it'll cure it, get rid of it, or whatever. Antioxidants are good for your body. Um, they improve your health and keep your immune system functioning in the best way. Each egg has 85 calories. That's not so bad. A banana is about 90. It's packed with 7 grams of muscle building protein apart from essential core vitamins like selenium, which has 22%, and vitamin A, B, and K. They also contain other nutrient, riboflavin, which is vital for core development and growth. So eating two eggs a day can greatly help fight off infections and keep the body healthy. Now it talks about vitamin K. If you are low on vitamin D and your doctor says you need to consume milk. Now listen, one of the things that I listed was milk. So you have a cup of milk and you have an egg and the two of them work together. You need vitamin K to get the benefits of vitamin D. So I, I'm just putting it out there. Vitamin D alone isn't going to help you. So if you have a physician who has prescribed vitamin D to you and you pick up a prescription for it, make sure you ask them, well, what about vitamin K? Because you should have both of them because the two of them work together. It's sort of like adding the pepperine into the um, turmeric that I make. It works more effective because when I use the turmeric with the pepperine and I use it every day, I don't have as much pain as I once did. And it's awesome because I take two a day and I'm doing fine. And if I forget three or four days in a row because I'm busy or whatever, then I suffer and then I have to kind of take them again, maybe double up for a few days. With your vitamin D, whether you take it in a capsule form or not, I would recommend if you can't get it in regular dairy milk, there's alternate milks, including goat milk, that might be able, your body might be able to handle. And I recommend goat milk. I do really well with goat milk. And it's a different type of flavor, so you kind of have to decide, do you really want to consume that or do you want almond milk? You've got, you've got to kind of decide. You also get vitamin D from the sun. If you don't slather chemicals on your body, because when you're out in the sun, your body needs to absorb the rays. Now, the rays are dangerous, so you need to make sure that you limit how much time you're out in the sun. And there are times that it's great. Now, in the wintertime, you don't get as much vitamin D. But in the summertime, you do. But you still need K. And so eggs can be a source of vitamin K. There's other ways to get your vitamin K as well. But eggs have it. That's an option. Now, it helps relieve cold and flu, the eggs. They're a remedy for fighting off a nasty cold or flu infection and have been used in, familiar, in families for hundreds of years now. When you are under the weather, the body needs protective and helpful nutrients to recover faster. Eggs come loaded with zinc, which can speed up the recovery and get rid of the cold. How often have we been told that zinc is something to consume? I take zinc, I used to, I used to take zinc from October through the spring, through March or April, and I, I definitely did it during the first two years. Now, I'm not afraid of death because God knows when my time is and that's when I go. But I certainly don't want to be sick. I really want to function. So I was taking the zinc and then now that I'm consuming eggs and stuff, I'm like, I don't need to take those anymore. So they, I don't even take them anymore. And it's kind of nice because I'm using, I only had like a few supplements that I was using, zinc and one other. So it's really kind of nice to have gotten rid of them. And it helps in recovery. If you are recovering from surgery or um, a virus, you, it helps with that. So it contains plenty of B vitamins which help the body convert food into fuel and give you nourishing energy to carry you through the day. The, selen the selen selenium 
pres present in eggs can also help promote good heart health. Cut out bad cholesterol and keep lifestyle at bay. Did you hear that? Cut out the bad cholesterol. It doesn't say to cut out eggs, and eggs are good for you. I think, you know, science is great. I'm glad that people are doing studies, but we need to look at the whole thing. Even when they do medications, first they might have something that's good for us, and then it just kind of twitters out, and so all of a sudden they decide that, oh, we can't do that. But don't, you know, don't be so concerned about eggs, and yolks are the part that have all the cholesterol. It's a good source of cholesterol. So hearing this, that eggs are good for you, on average, two a day. You don't have to eat a dozen eggs. And as I have shared before, maybe I shared it earlier here, too much of a good thing is not going to help you. Just because it has zinc and because it helps fight off viruses and help build bones and all that, doesn't mean you all have to have a dozen eggs every day. Moderation is the key. No matter what you're consuming, you can eat all healthy foods, but if you overconsume, you're gonna feel sick and you're not going to be healthy. So moderate your eggs. I can have um, hard-boiled eggs and sometimes I might have it for breakfast. I wake up and I'm hungry. I have a hard-boiled egg and I'm good to go for a while because the protein in eggs actually is a filling product. So protein we need. My body craves protein and it craves red meat. But you know I'm trying to be very careful even though it's a good nutrient you have to be careful on all of that. So my goal for today was to share with you that they use this for coronavirus um, for help to help healing as well as preventive. We use these other things to help us stay healthy too. Does it mean you're never going to get a virus? Absolutely not. What it's saying is how you eat and treat your body is what makes you healthy. Now, sometimes we can't help it. Our bodies might be weak in other areas, or maybe we have a disease that we're trying to get rid of. So we could be deficient in some areas. So sometimes some things aren't going to help us keep from having um, viral infections. And that's why it was important when the unknown was there for everybody to wear a mask. Did I like wearing a mask? Do I like wearing a mask? No, but I wear one into the chicken coop, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> because I come out with my chest hurting it. Those masks are coming in really handy. <laughs> and so I'm glad I made them. But I wear them because the hospital still requires it. My other doctor doesn't. So, you know, it's kind of like you have to respect different people. I don't, do I think they were important at the beginning? Because of the unknown, yes. Do I think they're important now? No. The social distancing, it doesn't really matter as long as people aren't coughing on one another. But you know what? There's a way to cough into your elbow. There are ways to protect other people, like stay home, have an egg. <laughs> you can be the person that prevents the spreading. Healthy people do not spread things. I, I just don't buy into that. And I was accused that the reason people were sick was because I didn't get the vaccine. Well, first of all, I couldn't get it because of the peg in the vaccines and I just couldn't and so no matter what people said it's like you can say all you want first of all I'm not going anywhere not only that I eat healthy and if I get sick I'm gonna come out of it okay did I get I did get the flu once during this whole time but it wasn't horrible and I got over it we as individuals not your doctor, as individuals, but eating well, being smart about our nutrient intake, eating foods in moderation, shop the perimeter of your store, only go down the aisles when you need something like molasses or oatmeal, flour, whatever it is for baking goods that you use to make your own things, or when you need something like frozen vegetables because you're one that won't eat the fresh vegetables before they go bad. That's all fine. So you want to make sure that when you're in those aisles, you're picking up items that are nutritious and then you're going to be fine. But you know what's in the perimeter of the store? You got your vegetables. My, I go in, I go to the vegetable aisle. 
that's on the outside wall. My husband goes to the dairy, and then we meet in the middle where there's protein, which is your meats. We don't stay there very long because I prefer to go to the farm and pick up my meat. Today I picked up some chicken because I want to make something. Another that has cholesterol, but it's a healthy cholesterol. And you just make sure you cook this stuff, make sure you wash your chicken, and make sure that you cook it well so that you don't have any concerns. And if you can, go to your local farmer for some of these things. I wanted to come on and share this because I find it interesting. And this was an article from India. It's timesofindia.com. And I'll share the link and I'll share some other links below. Because I think it's important for consumers to know why were they not telling consumers? And why do we now have a problem with egg production? I don't think we do. So, yes, there's fires, and then they say, don't have eggs, don't do this. I want people to care about us. I really do. I want to trust my government, but at this point, I question it. But I do trust that if I do enough research before I make a decision, then I'm doing fine. I'm doing the best that I can for myself and my family. And you can too. I hope this was informative. And I'm not saying to change everything you do. This was for information only. I am not a doctor. I can't tell you how to change your lifestyle. I can't tell you not to eat certain things or to eat stuff that you've been told not to. All I can tell you is what I believe what has worked for us and how we just move forward because we're getting older. We don't want to die young because we feel like we're still young. We want to thrive until God says it's time to come home. And the only way to do that is to take care of our bodies one day at a time. Have a wonderful night and may God bless you.